Okay, so uh, many times our forces are not just acting just at one point. Uh, they are distributed across, and if we're in two dimensions, they're distributed across this line. Uh, for example, you know, like, like, a, like a shelf, right, on a bookcase. Um, it's not that there's just one force right here. There's kind of a, a weight that is distributed, and so maybe it is distributed at, maybe it's like two pounds per foot, all right? So this right here is a distributed load of two pounds per foot, uniformly distributed uh, over this first four foot section. And then we've got some heavier books that have a distributed load of 3.5 pounds per foot. Now, this is two pounds per foot. Look at the units right there. It's pounds per foot is distributed load. That is not the force. Don't tell, don't try to draw a force of two pounds. No. That is the distributed load. That, that's kind of like the, the height or the magnitude of this distributed load. Uh, but I'm probably going to want to sum up my forces, right? That's what we've been doing all semester, sum up the forces. I want to change this to a force that I can sum up. All right, so we can replace distributed loads with a force. So if I was to look at this first Distrib this uniform distributed load. It's a distributed load of two pounds per foot, uniformly distributed over four feet. What is the equivalent load, right? What is the equivalent force? The equivalent force for that one, and I'm, do, do, do the units help you out? Does, does it just logically make sense? If we have two pounds per foot and we have four feet of that it's really an eight pound force it's really an eight pound force now where would we put it where would we put it because we might want to sum the moments you know where would we put it well if it is uniform right if it is a uniform distributed load we would put it right smack dab in the middle. I, I would erase that distributed load and I'd say there's an equivalent force of eight pounds and it is right at the middle of that distributed load. It's really right at the centroid of that distributed load, but if it's uniform, then the centroid is, is right at the middle. So eight pounds at, you know, two feet from A, you know, eight pounds right at the middle. Uh, the, the, the other one, let me do it in green, this distributed load right here, I would replace it with an equivalent force of 3.5 pounds per foot times how much of it do I have. You know, it, it's almost like this 3.5, that's kind of the height, that's kind of the magnitude of it. So it has a height of 3.5 and I multiply it times its base of 1.5. Um, the units work out so that it gives me a force, 5.25 pounds. Because it's uniform, then I can just say it's right smack dab in the middle. Uh, so that would be at, you know, 0.75 from the right. Let's call this the right is, is, is from B. All right. So now I could sum my forces. I've, I've replaced that one with an 8-pound force. I replace this one with a 5.25 pound force. Now I can sum my forces in Y. Uh, now I can sum the moments if for some reason I wanted to sum the moments. Now, here's an optional step two. Optional step two. I say optional because I usually don't do this step, but occasionally the, someone will ask you, the book will ask you to do this step. But optionally, you could combine those two forces, two forces, to one equivalent force. The magnitude of that equivalent force, if I want to add the eight and the five pound force, then I think you all understand that the magnitude, the equivalent force would be 3.25 pounds. Um, and so I can use that to sum my forces. Uh, but the location, 
why do I care about location? Well, maybe if I want to sum the moments. The location would be somewhere in between. You know, if I'm, I'm trying to get rid of these and replace it with one force, it'd be a 13.25 pound force. Somewhere in between, what do you think it's going to be closer to? The closer to the 8 pound force or the 5 pound force? It's going to be over here a little bit closer to the 8 pound force. It's like a weighted average. It's like a weighted average. And here's how I would calculate the distance. Um, when combining combining two forces or three forces to one force, wouldn't you agree that the sum of the forces when it is two forces, the sum of the forces ha has to be the same w when it's one force. That, that's how we got the 3.25, right? We said uh, the, the um, we said the 8 point, the 8 and the 5.25 have to equal the same one force. That's how we got the 13.25. Um, but also, now to get the location, then the sum of the moments of those two forces would have to still be the sum of the moment of the one force. All right, so let's do this right here. The sum of the moment, and we can do it about A, we can do it about B, we can do it about A, point O, oh, any other point. We could sum the moments at any point, but the sum of the moments of the two forces would have to equal the sum of the moments of the one force, right? That one force has to behave the same way as those two forces. So those two forces create a moment about A, so that one force needs to also create the same moment about A, so that if you are A, you feel the same thing, whether you feel it by two separate forces creating a moment or just one force creating a moment. All right, so the two forces. If I was to sum the moments about A, I would get an eight pound force that is acting two feet away, creating a negative moment. I would get a 5.25 pound force, and let's, let's look at this, where this would be. It would be four plus 0.75. It would be 4.75 feet away, also creating a negative moment. All right, that's gonna equal the same. What if it was one, a 13.25 pound force, what distance d would it be at? It would be at a distance d of 3. Point, so from this equation, I can just solve 3.09. So the magnitude, 13.25, I got that by summing the forces. The location, uh, 3.09 feet, I got that by summing the moments. Okay? All right, but the main thing is that for uniform distributed loads, you can just take the height or, you know, the magnitude of the distributed load times the base, you know, how, how much of that distributed load it covers. Um, the units help you out here to get the magnitude, and you put a uniform load at the middle. You put the uniform load at the middle. All right, let's practice uniform distributed loads. Let's replace the distributed loads with one force. Well, this first uh, distributed load, 6 kilonewtons per meters times 1.5 meters would be a magnitude of 9 kilonewtons. Magnitude of 9 kilonewtons at a 0.75 from the end on the left. Let's call it end C. This is from point C. 75 from point C. Uh, the next one, 9 kilonewtons per meter has, is its height. Its base is 3 meters. Uh, 27 kilonewtons. It would be at the middle. The middle, 1.5 plus another 1.5, 3 meters from C. And then the last one, 3 kilonewtons per meter acting over 1.5 meters, 4.5 kilonewtons at 5.25, right? It would be 0.75 in addition to everything else, 5.25 from C. Now, I might leave it at that because I can use that when I'm, so I can sum the forces if that's the next step, or I can sum the moments if that's the next step. But if I want to replace it with one force, then the magnitude... I would get by summing the forces of the three equals the sum of the forces of the one. So 
9 plus 27 plus 4.5 would be equal to that one force, that one force, and y'all knew this, 40.5 kilonewtons. That was the one that made sense. Now, the distance, the location of this, if I've got this uh, 9 kilonewton force right here, if I've got this 27 kilonewton force right here, and if I've got this 4.5 kilonewton force, where should I place that 40.5 kilonewton force so that it behaves just like as if it were three separate forces by summing the moments of the three equals the sum of the moments of the one. Summing the moments of the three. Normally I choose counterclockwise to be uh, positive, but here I'm going to choose clockwise to be positive. I'm going to sum the moments about NC, this left end right here. Sum the moments about C. Well, I've got the 9 kilonewton force 0.75 away. I've got the 27 kilonewton force 3 away. And I've got the 4.5 kilonewton force 5.25 away. That has to create the same moment as if it was just one force, one distance away. What would that distance away be? 2.75 meters. All of this was from end C. 2.75 meters from NC. So I replaced the distributed loads with a uh, 40.5 kilonewton force, 2.75 meters from C. So that's how you can replace uniform distributed loads with one force and, and you know, kind of figure out where its location is. But what if it's not uniform? What if it's not uniform? So you can go to the next page. I hope you like my drawings, right? What if it's not uniform? Well, let's start with uniform, okay? Let's start with uniform. We would replace this, right? If, it, if the magnitude, if the height, that's not the force. That is the magnitude of the distributed load, 10 kilonewtons per meter. You know, that height is 10 kilonewtons per meter, and it's acting along all five meters. I think it makes perfect sense. 10 kilonewtons per meter. The units give you a hint here. Time, and you got five meters of it would be 50 kilonewtons, and I, I would place it, I would have a 50 kilonewton force right at the middle, uh, 2.5 meters from the left, 2.5 meters from the right. That, that's too easy. All right, but what if you have a distributed load that is getting larger and larger and larger the further you go down on your beam? It's getting heavier and heavier and heavier the further you go down on your beam. Now, instead of a uniform 10 kilonewtons, it goes from 0 to 10 uh, across this 5. Uh, all right, so instead of having a uniform, you know, height of 10, and I would just multiply that height times the base of 5 to get my 50. Now it goes from 0 to 10 um, across this base of 5. What do, what do you think the magnitude would be? What do you think the magnitude would be? Well, it goes from 0 to 10. I, I think, well, on average, it's kind of like an average of 5, right? Uh, this is going to be half, right? This is one half of that 10 kilonewtons per meter height times the base right here. Uh, and, and so this would be 25 kilonewtons. Um, so you can think about it a few different ways. Um, it, you, you could just cut that one in half that we just did. You know, it was half of that one that we just found, right? Um, or I like to think of it as um, it's it's the average, you know, 0 to 10. I can just say it's an average of 5. Uh, so that's how we get the 25. You know, 1 half height times base. Where should we place it? Now, this is not uniform. Where do you think more of the force lies. Where do you think more of the force lies? I think it's going to be a little bit skewed over here to the right. You know, not right down the middle at 2.5. It's skewed here to the right. And it is. It is two-thirds of five to the right and only one-third of five to the left. Uh, you know, from one-third of five to the right. Right, so 10 thirds from the left side, 5 thirds from the right. So linear distributed loads that go from 0 to 10, like a triangle. So we'll call them triangular distributed loads. Triangular distributed loads 
uh, the magnitude is one half of that height times the base. And we place that at two thirds to the right. Uh, do y'all know that a centroid of a triangle is two thirds? We, we are placing this at the centroid of this triangular distributed load, all right? Now, did you notice anything about these, I don't know, shapes? This triangular distributed load, its magnitude is one half height times base. The uniform distributed load, its magnitude is height times base. Are you seeing what I'm saying? We can think of these distributed loads as areas. We can think of it as shapes, and the magnitude is going to be the area as if it was a triangle, the area, you know, as if it was a rectangle. It's just the area. What is the area of a, rec a triangle? One half height times base. What is the area of a rectangle? Base times height. So that's how I think of these. The magnitude of the distributed load is the area of the loading. The location is the centroid of the loading, right? Think of these distributed loads now as shapes, as just areas, and we can think of the magnitude is the area of the loading, the um, location is the central of load. That, that is the main thing. That is the main thing. The magnitude is the area of the loading, location is the central of the loading. So you can handle uniform distributed loads. I think now you can handle triangular distributed loads. We'll get to two more uh, cases um, of distributed loads that you're going to need to be able to handle, be able to understand. All right? Next video.